Welcome to the live steam build of Charles, the Penryn Quarry Engine. This is being built to 1 12th scale, to run on gauge 1 or G gauge 45mm gauge track. Now it's time to make the finished valve gear parts, and duplicates for the left side cylinder. I'll be making new lifting arms and link hangers, one new suspension arm and four new split eccentric straps as well as two eccentric end plates to stop the strap falling off the inner eccentrics. The pieces for the two new lifting arms. The outer will be curved for aesthetic appeal, but the inner cannot be, otherwise it will hit the boiler barrel. The first one is complete. That curve was scribed using the base of a handy tin. The three parts were held together and aligned using a threaded spacer for the brazing operation. Here's the left side, fluxed up, ready for silver brazing. I filed the large radius and blended the underside afterwards. Here are the blanks for the four expansion link hangers, ready for radiusing. The two lifting arms in position. Hangers bolted together with the quarter inch filing buttons for the second end. A second suspension arm was needed to hold the left side extension rod. It's brazed and ready for radius filing. Starting on the four new split eccentric straps, they are 3 16 wide discs of LG2 gunmetal. I've had the material in stock since I made the steam diesel cylinder. Hand sawn from the stick. It's lovely stuff. Dimensions so that it will clean up at 1.5 inch diameter. It's about 1.560 diameter, unmachined. It was easy to saw with a 24 TPI all hard blade. I cut around the periphery first and then cut down indexing it 90 degrees. You can see the marker pen on the end. Swarf everywhere in the late afternoon winter sun. I have turned two eccentric end plates from 1.6 mil steel sheet soft soldered onto the mandrel. In the four jaw chuck for drilling the 5 16 eccentric bore, it is 150 thou off center, clocked up with my plunger clock. Four eccentric strap blanks, 190 thou thick with a 0.7 inch bore. Milling the sides for the holding screws. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that I had gone 1 8 of an inch too deep and was already down to near the center line. One turn of the lead screw too many. Center drilling with a BS2 center drill, with a 3 16 shank up against the milled side. Spot facing with a 7 32nd slot drill, to give enough room to fit my socket for the small head 8BA hex screws. Roughly profiling around what will be the finished bore for the eccentric. It was supposed to end up a 1 8 wall section. This is how I tackle the second strap, but not how I made the remaining two. The first strap needed some material adding. You can see the oil hole that will be vertical when the strap is in position with a little reservoir. The bottom side of the second strap for profiling. I realized that I could cut off a 1 8 section to use in repairing the first strap. Here's the roughly profiled second strap. Drill through 1.8mm for 8B8 tapping on the other side after slitting in half. The oil hole is also 1.8mm with a 2.8mm drilled reservoir on top. Slitting the second strap in half with a trusty 45 thou wide slitting saw. It took a lot of setting up, trying to get it in the correct position. There weren't any second chances. The fixing screw holes have been drilled 8BA clearance on the upper half and tapped on the lower for quarter inch long screws. Here's the job upside down, super glued to a mini faceplate in the fore jaw for setting true. The split has to be in the middle as close as can be. The job gently detached itself during boring. So here it is getting re-glued. I hadn't degreased the surface prior to gluing the first time. No damage was done. Here's the strap after finished boring to three quarter inch diameter. 
the setup for finding the centerline for the one quarter inch wide rod slot. The two rollers are also one quarter inch. As I'm reusing the existing rods, the slot must be deep. It's just 20 thou shy of the bore. This tiny carbide cutter worked well taking 10 thou deep cuts, traversing left and right. The exterior profile has been filed smooth. Cooling down after heating to red heat to remove the old strap. The old with the new. Starting on the third eccentric strap, this time plunging straight in with a 732nd slot drill, then drilling the 1.8 mil holes. Straight on to the slitting. This is the new way, turning first, then profiling last. It's time to repair the first eccentric strap. First off, the drilled holes were plugged with pieces of 16th brass rod and silver brazed in. Gunmetal always goes this colour after heating to red heat. The job is cooling down before its bath in citric acid. Next, skim the faces for the 1 8 pads. Cooling down after the pads have been brazed. It's important that there is enough silver braze on the inner ends. There'll be no lower support after slitting. There we are, back to square one. The first eccentric strap is ready to proceed again. Slitting the repaired strap after drilling the screw holes. All three remaining straps ready for boring and skimming to width in the lathe. The repaired eccentric strap after facing and boring. I'm testing it with the eccentric. I scribed around the profile of the first shaped strap with both pieces mounted on a piece of three quarter inch bar this time marking the circular sections with the calipers from the bore to maintain a one eighth section. The first piece went a bit undersized in places, as I bored it last. Roughly milling around the profile, but to the correct depth. Sighting along the tool steel to get the pad parallel with the cut. Checking to see where the center line of the bore is in relation to the pad to mill the slot for the rod. The rollers are one quarter inch diameter and the strip is a quarter inch wide. Making sure the lines are parallel and then measuring the dimension with a drill shank. The finished slot, 0.260 wide centers with a starting dimension that of the drill shank dimension from the previous image. I had to split the strap to deburr the oil hole. After the oil holes were drilled and the rod slots milled, the profiles were smoothed by filing. An enjoyable bit of bench work. Starting on the eccentric strap rods, cutting a strip from 1.6mm steel with the Eclipse 55 sheet metal saw. This is how I set it up to fly cut it, using a parallel in the chuck to align the long edge. A piece of tool steel under the job supports it farther than the vice can. The cutter will be cutting on the downstroke. Cutting off the fork ends that will connect to the expansion link. These are half an inch long. The ends have been brazed on, and one has been slit 1 8 by 3 8 deep. Both were drilled 1.8 mil for 8BA tapping first. Under the magnifier, quarter inch filing buttons ready for rounding the end. This is the best way for the buttons. On the outside of the job, there's a small one supporting in the middle so that the fork doesn't get distorted. Thanks for watching.